Hey, welcome to Ticking Gray Bomb. I'm Mace. I'm with Max. What up? What up? And today we're going to do a follow up on our Kickstarter video that we put out in October. Um, give you a little update there. Um, should be a relatively quick video. And I thought I should highlight a video we just put out on the Fratello and Aquastar collaboration. It's the one with the ice blue dial and the big eye um, with the red seconds hand. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And in future programming, uh, Max and I thought we would kind of go back to our uh, movie favorites and do kind of a draft of adversaries in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie universe. So be on the lookout for that. We'll kind of do our own, uh, you know, NFL style draft um, and kind of I think that'll be a fun one. So that'll be coming in the next week or two. Um, as you may recall, if you're one of the lucky 50 or so viewers who looked at our video, <laughs> it was also our first video in Ticking Grey Bomb. Um, we both decided to back Kickstarter camp campaigns. Um, I backed uh, the Tactico Atlantis watch um, and Max, you backed. I, yep. I backed the Orador uh, dive watch. Right. So, um, you know, I would say at this point, um, various levels of success, you know, between the two of us, I think we predicted this and both hoped the other one would come out on the short end of the stick. So, um, why don't you go first? I think your, your share might be a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker. Yeah. So I yeah, got <laughs> it's quicker only because there's nothing to share. <laughs> uh, so, so my project, the order sportsman um was set to deliver in february well as we're shooting this video it is february 28th it's the very last day of february and i can share that there are no order sportsmen that are shipping um this month now um thankfully i would say about two weeks ago we got an update um hat in hand type update from orador saying that um there was a delay and that um, the watches would be shipping next month in March instead of this month. Um, I checked in to ask specifics around the delay, and I was told that, um, again, uh, that it was a delay relating to the case, um, which, again, I, I was happy for the transparency that they shared with us. I mean, typically, you know, we see these projects of, you know, touting Swiss made watches for sub $1,000. You know, in many cases, you know, while I do think they're probably making less money and there are less uh, hands throughout the chain to, 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 to take a margin, um, the reality is they're making a lot of the, a lot of these watch components are made in China or made overseas, not in Europe, right? And not in Switzerland. So, um, you know, it's clear, you know, the case probably had some, maybe other components had some delays that were either related to um, either just straight up manufacturing or related to the Lunar New Year holiday. Um, and, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, the watch will be delivered next month. Um, no details. You know, we were able to to kind of customize the watch level. They, uh, you know, I'd say they were faithful to the initial stage timeline. Um, they gave us choice around, you know, what what colorways we wanted, what number, you know, what case numbers we wanted. Um, no confirmation on whether we're going to get those or what we're going to get. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what happens over the next 30 days. We knew this was a kind of a roll the dice project, you know, particularly, uh, you know, this, this is not my first Kickstarter, uh, experiment. So I really, I went into this eyes wide open that this could be a giant dumpster fire. It doesn't appear to be. The good news is, you know, these guys seem to be res responsible, in terms of marching through the process, um, I did get, you know, I should add, and, and Mace, you know, we talked about this. Um, I got a random, and this is probably about a month ago, um, I got a random update from Orador. I'm just checking to see, um, you know, so yeah, you know, just from a timeline standpoint, um, probably in December, um, we got a note, December, January timeframe that they took uh, the watch to like a dive school to take pictures, right? Um, you know, clearly they were super excited about that. I, you know, it's 
while it's nice to see a watch, you know, perhaps in its, you know, intended habitat, um, you know, it doesn't do a whole lot, but, but at least they're communicating with the, with the backer community. Um, and, uh, you know, again, while I would have liked the, the watch in February when it was, uh, when it was promised, if we always see as a month delay, I think these guys have done a pretty good job. Right. Yeah. So, well, we'll look forward to another update. Um, yeah. Hopefully one with a, uh, with smiles on your face and with a watch. You know, yeah. yeah. And a watch on your wrist. Right. So I, on the other hand, um, you know, I backed Tactico, um, the Atlantis model. They had um, had a couple of successful Kickstarter campaigns. So I think they have this, uh, have this bit down. Um, there was enough bank uh, backing to go through with this. I ordered mine on September 20th, or I backed mine on September 20th. I got an email um, October 7th asking me kind of what colorway I wanted. And I think that's a, that's just confirming kind of what movement I wanted in the watch. Then I didn't hear from them until January 25th to ask uh, to confirm the shipping address. And then on February 12th, I got a notification that um, it was shipping. Right. Two days later, I had to watch my hand. So here's the Tactico Atlantis. I got the black dial colorway. They also had a teal and kind of a yellow orange um, dial. But this is the one that I picked. And look, I think it's a lot of value for um, the money that I paid. And I think it was around, you know, US maybe 750 or so. And I, I think it's a nice looking watch. It's got kind of an interesting jubilee. It has kind of brushed outer links and kind of shiny uh, middle links. Um, but I think it's a sturdy, sturdy watch, has a helium escape valve. But I think along the way, um, I was a little bit, I don't want to say concerned. I knew that they had gone through this before, but I guess I was amused by the kind of the lack of communication through Kickstarter. Um, I think they did a little bit better job on Instagram, but I hadn't necessarily followed them on Instagram until kind of later in the process when I started like, you know, it's been a long time since I heard from them. Maybe I go search them out somewhere. Um, but I think this kind of um, is in line with them kind of having their process down. They got the backing. They just kind of went to work and didn't spend a lot of time kind of um, you know, updating or communicating. And um you know, if you're a less patient man than myself, then maybe that would concern you a lot more. Um, I think I will do kind of a follow-up video on this. Um, this, it, the you know, Tactico is um, part of a bigger uh, watch company, Kripas uh, Watches out of Zaragoza, Spain. España. And as luck would have it, um, I was in Barcelona last week and this is the watch that I wore um, about 90% of the time that I was there. So it was kind of nice to kind of do that. And so I'll follow up with um, a video specific to this. And um, I will say I didn't take a lot of photos of it in Spain, kind of out and about. Um, you know, that Barcelona is uh, kind of known for pickpockets and um, targeting watches. I don't necessarily think they would have targeted this one. It's not a hype watch. But... Um, but I was pretty cautious about about kind of uh, doing something. And plus, I don't think my kids would be terribly excited or enthused about daddy stopping to take watch picks all along, um, you know, the Sagrada Familia or, uh, you know, Montserrat or anything like that. So um, glad to have it in my hands. I think it's kind of a sturdy watch and uh, pretty handsome. And I'm pretty satisfied with uh, with having it in my hands. No, it looks good, Mace. Uh, it's a good looking watch. So Mace, for our viewers' benefit, do you want to, I think it would be important to take us through um, the choice and movements and then why you picked what you picked for the watch. Yeah, so Tactical offered two movements, um, the ETA 2824-2 and the Ronda R150, and I decided to go with the ETA. I'm less familiar with the Ronda, um, I think it gets pretty pretty good pub, um, but I decided to go with the Etta. I think most watchmakers are um, definitely able to service them. And uh, I did pay a little bit of a premium for them, but I think it was worth it. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, Ronda, uh, you know, Ronda, the Ronda movements, both the Swiss quartz and the Swiss automatic are good. They have good reputations, but you know, Etta, uh, you can't go wrong with the Etta. I mean, in terms of the um, third party movements, I mean, Etta by far it has the best reputation. You know, as we've said, it's harder and harder for independents to find Etta movements because the Swatch Group has kind of limited those, uh, the distribution of those. So I think I think you made the right call. Was there a premium? Do you remember if there was a premium attached with that? There definitely was a premium. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I want to say maybe 100, 125 euros, something like that. Yeah. I mean, look, in the scheme of things, it's like, okay, is it worth it? I mean, how long am I? But, you know, it's worth it. It's yeah. worth it. I mean, you have, you know, from a resale value standpoint, uh, you know, to say, hey, there's an Etta movement in here, um, you know, I, I, I think it helps. So so I did not have a choice. I should I should step back and say this. I did not have a choice in my project, I had a choice kind of of certain aesthetics, um, dial, uh, bezel, color, um, straps, but the movement is a Ronda R150 movement. So it's the first in my collection with a Ronda movement. So I'd be curious to see how that performs relative to some of the Eddas and, um, um, and, and Seiko movements and other things in the lower end watches that I have. Yeah, I, and I should mention, I was gonna do this in the follow-up video. It uh, came with a watch roll, um, and it came with a rubber strap. So I nice. rolled this out, came with kind of this, uh, porthole style. Um, yep. A little racing strap. Yeah. Yeah. So, nice. yeah. So, I mean, gives, gives me an option there. I, I would say if I had to do it over again, I think the only thing I might do is maybe select a different color dial, be a little bit more, uh, adventurous with my selection, but okay, ultimately, fair. But yeah, no, no, but Mace, you know, the, the, so the choices were basically yellow, blue, and black? Yeah. Okay, I mean, you know, you look at your, uh, the Fratello, you know, watch that you got. I mean, that has a, that, that has an almost the same type of bezel. Yep. And you say yellow is, yellow is not a watch you can wear all the time. No, that's true. That's a summer right? watch. Yeah. So they really didn't leave you a whole lot of choice. Not that you knew you were going to buy um, that that Fratello limited edition watch. Um, but, you know, now you have two teal watches or, you know, two aqua watches, right. you know, right. come on, you're not vanilla ice. <laughs> yeah. So uh, any last uh, comments on, on this Kickstarter update? I think uh, we probably tattooed it pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean, look, from my standpoint, I'm super happy for your Mace. I mean, you know, Tactico seems to have really ironed out the process. Um, you got a great watch in exactly the time that you uh, that you expected. So kudos uh, to Tactico and good for you. Um, and, and again, I think for our viewers, I think it's good validation that there are, you know, that, that there, you know, Kickstarter isn't all train wrecks. Um, you right. have to pick through, you have to kind of pick, you have to really be a picker, um, a project picker, but you can find some good projects for mine. I mean, again, let's see what happens it's by far, you know, it, it, by no means a failure. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what, what arrives in the next uh, 30 or 45 days. All right. Sounds good. And I think with that, we'll sign off. Bye-bye.